So I want to show you a trick uh, using a couple cards. I ask a spectator to name one openly, whichever one they like. And let's say they name the five of spades in this particular case. Hopefully the lighting is good. I'm not, uh, it's not too shiny. Anyway, so, so they say the five of spades and we get the five of spades and I show it to them saying, you know, this is interesting because um, this is only red this is only actual blue card amongst all the red cards, which is uh, kind of odd. You have to choose that one. I mean, uh, look at the seven of hearts, uh, ace of hearts, three of clubs, uh, two of diamonds. Heck, uh, I mean, really, the five of spades is only blue and so odd. Here's the cool part, though. Here's the cool part, though. If I get the five of spades and I shake it over all the other cards, do you know what happens? And they go, what happens? And I go, all of them turn blue just like that. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> and people are so amazed by this. They're like, no way. Um, and they go, change it back. I'm like, um, okay, I give another spin. And then I uh, can show all the cards are uh, red like so. Like, no way! Change it again! There's just no winning with you people, is there? <laughs> so with that said, uh, that is Packet Trick, the full extended version, if you really want to see that. Uh, my name is Dan, and wishing you a wonderful day. Next on our Packet Trick list is White Fang, and I really want to show it to you. We get, uh, we're going to use a prediction card, okay? We'll set it aside, and let's just say a card box will go on top. And we've got some other cards as well, uh, secret cards that we will use as a prediction. Or rather, you know what, let's, let's make it about, um, let's change the plot. Let's make it more to be a goal. You are going, the spectator, I, uh, I ask your name, let's say your name is Marcy. I go, hey Marcy, I'm going to need your help. I want you to uh, eliminate cards down to one card that you think can be, um, is a, ma a mate to that card that's face down. They go, okay. So we're going to, um, and we can even mix it up as we go along, set down the cards like so. And I just say, point your, put your fingers on top of any two cards, your choice. And they say, these two, okay, do you want to change your mind? And I'm like, okay, fine here. I'm like, okay. And we eliminate the other three cards very openly and fairly. Okay, these two, and of these two, um, I ask them to simply nudge one card towards me. They do so. Okay, I set the other one away. And now we're down to one card. And believe it or not, it is a ten of clubs. Yay, it means absolutely nothing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, so we happen to stop upon the ten of clubs. Now this means entirely nothing whatsoever, realistically. Unless, and they can do this themselves, they can match this card perfectly. <laughs> and then they say, okay, that's crazy. But there's always a 40% of people asking, well, they could have all been the Ten of Clubs, which is true. That's, I understand that. I get that. Except when you consider the fact that when they turn it over, not me, you can see that all... The other cards are blank and the specter can be doing this not me they check it out it really is all blank uh, cards like that and he really did predict that card <laughs> I'm Dan I hope you enjoyed white bang so this is a trick I like to call color pixelated we've got a couple cards here but I want to show you kind of an optical illusion almost per se I'll even close my laptop for this. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an optical illusion. Uh, for what it seems, when I ask people what, the people what they see, they and I just showed them the cards, they would normally say, I see three red cards and one blue card. And I go, that is very interesting. Okay, Because some people, uh, when I spin the cards, they see something else. They actually tend to see, and I'm going real slow, three blue cards and one red card. Quite odd, uh, in fact. And when I turn over the cards, cards seem to be normal. I'm like, okay. 
but gets really weird when I start giving another spin. And then I start to see cards turning of this weird back design I've never really seen before. Boom, boom, boom. It's just a very, very odd thing that's just occurring. And all I have to do is give it a flick. And some cards are red. Some cards are blue. I don't know what's going on. And I thank you. <laughs> and that is a weird card trick I like to call color pixelated. So since this is a jam section lecture on packet tricks, I'm going to include everything all together and it's going to be updated in much higher quality. So it's much easier viewing experience than the last one and just updated thoughts and handlings and stuff of that nature. And then I'll splice them up into individuals. So those who don't want to watch all three at once can search for it individually. So the first one is uh, that we're going to dive into, I believe is Paxit trick. I believe that was the first one I had taught on here. That one is color pixelated. Yup. This is white fang. Okay. So, so Paxit trick. You can use whatever cards you'd like realistically, but I want to alternate. So one thing I chose, let me set it back up uh, with this effect and how I have it. I'll show the cards and then you can modify it to your own needs. So let me just do this. So with these cards, the cards I'm using is the uh, uh, a red-backed Queen of Spades, okay? And then the next card is the Seven of Hearts, Five of Spades, Ace of Hearts, Three of Clubs, and the Two of Diamonds. And these are all blue, so it's five blue cards and one red-backed Queen of Spades. Okay, so again, in the back, Queen of Spades, okay? And then the rest are blue cards, and that's it. And just six cards total. Okay, and it's really interesting how I did this. I just created this because I was inspired. Uh, Credits to Shoot. Shoot has a similar version with shapes, but I alternated it. And I just wanted to know a trick to do with uh, old cards that are colored and different things. And I kind of slowly came up with this, and I've been using it for years. It's been a great, great trick. And any final credits? Um, Halo Cut by Harry Lorraine it was used for this simulation, and Brother John Hammond, and other credits as I go along. To actually do this, explanation time. Uh, we got six cards. Uh, we've got the cards. And you, again, you can alternate them. I just like to include spiner tips, the ace, uh, an ace and um, a queen or a royal card, whatever you use, king, queen, whatever, maybe a jack, whatever you feel like. And then the colors are just color or uh, coordinated, uh, alternating. Uh, like red card, black card, red card, black card, red card, black card. And I try to give variants so it feels like a full variety for a spectator. So they got different choices to choose from. Again, queen of spades, seven of hearts, five of spades, ace of hearts, three of clubs, and two of diamonds are the ones I use. But again, you can change them. No big deal to fret about it. Okay. So I show the cards and I say name one out loud, whichever one they want. And we will use it for this effect. And they can really name any one, but they will alternate slight, alternate slightly if it's they choose the Queen of Spades. And I'm actually hoping that they choose the Queen of Spades because it's that one's a magician fuller option. Uh, humorously, let's start with that option, then go for the normal endings. So the crazy ending, then the normal endings. Uh, I this would normally be presented in this specific way for magicians. I spread the cards to them, and I would say to them, think of uh, name out loud any card you like free choice and I just be very very casual free choice and act, smile confidently and every single last time it's so great because they smile and they they just want to mess you up and so they immediately every time choose the queen of spades okay that is what magicians do they like to mess with other people for their own perversive humor and and to test each other and see if you're really that good so they choose queen of spades I go okay Okay. <laughs> if I was normally presenting this, I'd go, okay, uh, fair enough. I take half the cards right here from the six. I take three, put it below, and then turn it over. Okay. Or, or sorry, sorry, I don't turn it over. Uh, I squirt, I add three cards beneath. And I said, you could have named any card. You could have named the five of spades. I turn it over and I show it blue. You could have named the seven of hearts. And I show it blue. You could have named, and you could take the other cards out, it's fine. No big deal. No one's going to think you're going to do anything. 
The two of diamonds. Great. Three of clubs. Ace of hearts. You could have named any of these other cards. Be happy to name the queen of spades. And happens to be the only red one amongst all the blue ones. And then the magicians go crazy when I say the next line. They're already amazed. They're like, what? How, how did he do that? And I say, as a closing line, works every time. And then you infuriate them. Because now they go off, they're so mind-blown, and they're going off the assumption, it really does work every time? No! And they will beg you all day to repeat this trick over and over with the alternate option. And that is quite, quite hilarious. So that section actually makes it a magician fooler, which is really, really hilarious. And I've fooled countless magicians and had them just like running at me. Hey, you've got to do it again. You have to. It says it works every time. <laughs> which is so great. Um, so that is, again, if they choose the last option, um, literally just cut the cards. Uh, sorry, don't turn it over. Cut the cards. I keep on accidentally turning over. In performance, I realize I'm like, oh, wait. And I just turn them over like this. You could name two diamonds, three of clubs, ace of hearts. You could name the five of spades, the seven of hearts. But you happen to choose the, and I flick it to show sing singularity as a single card. Queen of spades, the only red one amongst all the blue ones. And then they freak out. Works every time. Now, assuming we're doing this normally, uh, we've got the cards. And they name one of the five right here. Let's say they name Ace of Hearts, okay? All the handling is the same for this. Name the Ace of Hearts, you upjog it. And then from there, um, you take it and you pull it out. So using your thumb, so you upjog the card. Okay, you have it upjogged right here. And then you take it with the thumb to the second from the top position, outjogged. Again, you do not want to flash uh, the backs of these cards. Okay, not yet. So you're showing the faces, they see the face, they point to the face, and then they got it, you up jogged it to second from the top. After showing it, up jogged to second from the top, and now we're in the set position. Um, give me one second, just take a sip of water. And then from there, we, we can say, that's interesting. Whatever card they choose, that's interesting, except for the bottom. That's interesting because. Uh, that's the only that you chose, you know, Ace of Hearts because it's the only blue one and I would turn it over. I should have done it in performance. I should have turned it over like this and then I can mention I turned it over like this and I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at to clarify. You've chosen the only blue one. This is the way you would do it. Blue one amongst all the red ones. And I go, huh. It makes me think for a second. Huh. Did I or is he cheating in some way? And then I'm going to do the next act just to clarify it. So the card is out jogged. I push it in sideways so I get a, a huge gymungus break right here I lift up very simply I square it and so I get a break above the bottom card like so Boom. and from here I'm going to do basically the halo cut Halo Rain's light halo cut but for single cards which is technically my own move um, but whatever I it's Harry Lorraine's technically. Um, so I, I'm just generously just, well, 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 crediting him and saying it's his move, but I'm just like, I will use this. I will borrow this as long as I credit. Yes. So we got the bottom card, break below it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take off two cards, credit John Armstrong as well. Four fingers going to cover the separation. Okay. Even though it's a fast motion, if you really want to be secure, you can use your four finger to cover each card. Okay. This is two cards as you peel off, and it looks like one card as you do it fast enough. Okay, I do it in an upward gesture, uh, mimicking John Armstrong's idea from his cards to glass in, I don't know what volume is, Armstrong Magic. John Armstrong, amazing magic. Not sponsored. So we showed the card, we're like this, and we pulled it up. So taking, it's like a milk shuffle if you do milk shuffles, taking the top and bottom card. I'm flashing purposefully so people can get an idea. And then coming up and then you can use your forefinger square it so it seems like a single card but in real time you say that um i mean the two of diamonds okay and i do it again i take off a single card i don't do another milk shuffle i just take off a, a single card and add it to the two of diamonds as i purposefully turn over 
and I don't know if I did enough in the performance, but you turn over and you show the red card. So you keep on turning over and they're seeing it, hopefully not flashing the blue cards. Okay. And so we turn on over. And so we're basically showing all the cards red, even though they're blue, uh, which is crazy. So peel off, show, peel off, show. And I can curl my forefinger back as I show it. So uh, the gesture again looks like big joke, uh, ace of hearts in this case. So break below. So I've chosen the five of spades and I turn and show. Okay. Five of spades. So again. So again. You could have cho uh, chosen the five of spades, three of clubs, two of diamonds, seven of hearts, or I could even do it up here to display, whichever. And then you can square and let go of the break. You can actually let go of the break. You don't even need to have it after you pulled off the first card. First card, and then you can square everything. So now that you've got all these cards, you're just hanging out. And you've displayed it. The, the red card is all of the cards. And then turn it over and show the blue okay so i'll actually do it in full-time action okay it's funny you chose ace hearts it's the only uh red card most blue ones no really the uh seven of hearts two of diamonds and you would want the continued motion of it seven uh sorry about that and in full action would look like this uh you could chose any card you chose the ace of hearts going back recapping uh, I mean, there was a two of diamonds, seven of hearts, three of clubs, five of spades, and then you show, and you should happen to choose the ace of hearts, the only blue one amongst all the red ones. Turn the packet over, making sure not to flash any of the blue ones, but you're keeping everything together with just the top red card, and get a break below it while you're at it. You're going to need it right now. Uh, you can even just use middle finger and thumb, lift up and get a break, or just casual relaxing and you get a break okay whatever method you decide to use got a break that's amazing and then they're like okay that's a decent trick whatever then they're like there's some it's like a puzzle to the spectator and now we're going to take it up to uh, a notch to magic miracle class with the following ending and you go but you really want to see and the position check red card all blue cards blue is arts okay so I get a break below the card, and I say, so you uh, want to know something cool? Want to know what happens if I get this blue card over all the red cards? And then I reap it, and I give it a shake. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up for a position. I've added the blue card to the top of the uh, red card, and I got a break below the red card. And then I transfer it to middle finger and thumb, other fingers coalescing. Okay, and we've got a break separation right here. So we get that, and then we say to him, do um, you know what happens if I get, get this, uh, the, your ace of hearts, and shake it over all the cards? Do you know what happens? And they go, what? And then I go forward with the double, okay? I give it a quick bend, and that helps to keep, like, uh, like you would use for invisible palm aces or stuff of that nature. Give it a quick bend to make sure the double stays. Uh, Howard is one of the best in the world at that currently, and I give him credit for that. So you drop it, and but you don't have to worry about it staying there. And then you immediately take the next card, single card, and you can drop it. And so now you got cover, and you can actually drop the cards where you think there might be flash, so you can give yourself cover. But again, practice makes perfect, and you can get the double uh, pretty much every time. Boom. I drop the next card. Boom. And then you can actually show the next cards if you want. You can even show that that other card, but I just feel like dropping the next one just the same way. And then you're like, last second, oh yeah, and I might as well show them. And then you can show this however you want, and then turn it face down, and then show this, and then turn it face down. Boom. Whoa, cool. Everyone's freaking out. That was amazing. And so that's the normal ending. You end right there, and then you're all good. But you're like, but how do I clean up? You have to do it the hard way thumb on the center of the pile or wherever it's most comfortable maybe at the back yeah at the back of this pile four fingers uh, yeah the four front fingers right here scoop all the cards and you turn it over real quickly or casually and so you don't have to worry about this red card and you can clean up put the cards away you're done okay that's where it normally ended but then I've performed this so many times that audiences just want to complain, just to complain, or they just want to push me further. I got a lot of hecklers that push me further, and 
it helps the bonuses in the effect you saw in the performance. And so to do that, um, so I've so I've uh, shown all the cards. They uh, covering that card. We've done the drop. We've uh, dropped the cards, shown it, shown it, and shown the cards. I'm like cool, and I relax. That's the end of the trick. Pick it on up, turn it on over, and you enjoy your applause. Continuing on to the next part because people want to know, and they're like, "Wow, that's amazing!" Now turn them all red. And then I would normally do a Bros with John Hammond frustration count to do it. But to do it, you need to take the top card casually. I would show the cards, okay? I've been using discrepancy that there are five cards when they're really there's six, but no one really notices past five. So I've got that to my advantage. Um, and I can show a couple cards, whatever. Um, I don't really make mention of the count. Now to do the spectators, which is exactly what you want for this effect. Uh, so don't please don't mention I've got six cards here. Otherwise spectators will be more aware. Okay So when we're doing the bonus phases you saw in the performance I take the top card take uh, after I've displayed the cards casually I take the top card to the bottom and I square everything up. I nudge it with my forefinger Have it and then I turn the cards. I say oh you really want to see it? Well if I give the cards a spin spinning with my middle finger square all the cards then you, uh, because you've taken the top card to the bottom, now we can show a red card, make sure everything's square so you don't flash the blue cards. Who would want that? And then we do a frustration count five times. So one, show two, show three, show four. Uh, actually, it's four times because you're actually simulating a double uh, right here. And that's why you need the discrepancy. So I show it, and then people are freaking out like, wait, what? No way. And then I get the uh, the double right here, and I turn it down. Middle finger and thumb is holding it after the Brother John Hammond move. Turn it down after I've shown them so they can see the front. Come down. Now the red card double, which is really a double, is right here. And I have it on the face of the deck. You could have it out like this if you want. But I just put it on top. And then I would say, yeah, isn't that amazing? And then they, some crazy spectators, if they're going to be spectators, ask, now change it back. And I'm like, trust issues. <laughs> or you asked for too much. And then, then I push off a single card. Red card's right here. Push off a single card, flick, and then show it's blue. And then put it, uh, turn it over, drop it on the deck. People are amazed. Put the cards away, and you're all done. And that extended part is only for hecklers if you really, or if you really want to do it. It's just a bonus little thing I love to throw in there. And uh, yeah, it's just a great card trick. It handles all situations. If it could handle hecklers, it could handle all of them. It's great displays, great magic. I love it. And uh, I hope you love it too. <laughs> or at least give it a try. It's a fun thing. You get six cards. One, you know, they can even be worn out cards. I mean, Depending, I mean, you wouldn't want to do it for professional performances, but casually, you just have these in your pocket and you can do this trick anytime. Great effect with multiple endings. That's cool. Uh, it's a great talking piece. Uh, especially if you do PUA work. Um, anyways, with that said, give the video a like. Uh, hit subscribe if you can. And if you haven't checked out this video or this video yet, definitely check them out. And I'll see you next video. And the next one is um, White Fang. White Fang is a wonderful, interesting piece I want to get into, and I have a lot of fun thoughts on this. But before I do so, please, if you can, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want more magical content. It really does help me out. So jumping into uh, White Fang, which I named after Ruby. Yes, just hate me all you want, but... Just when the earlier season that you saw White Fang, or the earlier seasons you saw it, it was just kind of cool. Um, so I named after that, and not the deeper negative side of it. It's just the name sounded cool, okay? Just leave me alone. <laughs> um, so the setup for this is um, for uh, blank cards. You will need blank cards. You could use just odd red cards and these are be the black cards the difference but they just really hits way harder i've done a comparison you could even use jokers but it just doesn't hit as hard seeing blank cards it's like wow he really thought of everything it really does happen that's cool so 
uh, get them off of Penguin or eBay or whatever magic website um, has those Vanishing Ink, I think. I don't know. Um, by your favorite magic dealer. So you get four blank cards, okay? And again, you have the option of just using the opposite color cards, okay? You're going to need a, so four red ones, lay right there, one red backed ten of clubs, and one blue backed ten of clubs, okay? That's it. Really simple. Once you've got these uh, blank cards, let's say, it, I'm just going to deal with this. It just really does make it like 30% more impactful. We get the Ten of Clubs. We put it into the, um, what is it? Second from the bottom position. So second from the face over here. Uh, this is the position, okay? All three blank cards, Ten of Clubs, another blank card, okay? All red. The blue card will go on top. You could put this in your wallet, you can put in your whatever professional set, and you are set up. If you really want to, you could put a rubber band on it, just so the cards don't fly any, everywhere and you don't lose them. But that is the general setup. Blue, ten of clubs. Uh, blank card, blank card, blank card. Ten of clubs, which is the red one. And then a blank card. Okay. So now what we do... Uh, is we have, and we're also going to need a cell phone or something to put on top to really secure it. It adds a little bit of impact as well. I said, I want to try a little prediction effect with you. Okay, I'm going to push off, I push off openly the blue card, set it off, and then I have some object on top. So their phone, something, it makes it personable to them. Right, we're going to their drink, great. Though you might need a new card after because it's going to get wet and soggy and get destroyed. Um, deck of cards but then again deck cards might not be the best thing because they'll think you're doing some switching move but just something so let's just say i do it with my uh heel cup not sponsored but i would love to get uh or have them sponsor me it'd be cool we set it on top so that prediction is there and say i want to play a little game not like saw off but we'll play a little game <laughs> And we start mixing the cards, and you can mix them however you want. Uh, just note the card. So right now I got the card to the top, the ten of clubs to the top. So you know it starts out in the second from the bottom position. And you can mix them up however you want. But just um, make sure it's second from the bottom when you need it. Okay? And so I maybe mix it up. And then I start setting the cards on the table. Starting the middle card. Setting the two cards on the sides down. And then these two down the sides. Oh, move the uh, drinks aside just for this okay but you you get the general idea of the pred predictions right there okay then i do a equivocate as magicians would imagine just using five cards to get to the card and magicians already know it's equivocate okay there's no surprise there but the thing is five cards is the perfect minimum amount i have found from experience to give the magic effect it's crazy but i tested it and it works so they can point any two cards they want. If they touch upon the selection and another card, you eliminate the other three. Okay? If they touch two other cards, then you could even tell them to touch a third one if they want. If they go for something outside the selection, we can burn and ditch uh, or discard all three cards, and now we've got the two cards. So ideally, what it is is... Through whatever choice they make, you either uh, keep or discard cards and give a very vague basis so they don't know uh, what's really going on. They just understand that the cards are being eliminated. And it seems in a fair, casual process because you're very calm, you're very calculated. You're not trying to put pressure, but you are trying to get to end destination. They don't know it. They just think they're randomly doing this. You're doing a force, uh, which is equivocate. And uh, we're just trying to get to that result. And it's really easy. It's like, this is like the easiest equivocate out there. I'm not even kidding. Well, if you do two card equivocate, yes. But for entire effect, this is really good. It's like a really easy equivocate. They point to two cards, okay? They say these two. You'll make these three, and then you go into the second phase, okay? If they point to two, and that's not the ones you want, you eliminate them, okay? They point to these two, and where you would have eliminated before, you go, okay, and then we'll eliminate the free one. As an example, okay? Now we get to two position. We want to just get down to two cards, okay? 
or you can get a John Armstrong moment where it was with a spectator. Um, I say put uh, point to two, and they only point to one, and it's the selection. You're like, okay, you're very specific, and then you eliminate all the others, and then you show the card prediction, and you're all set. And it looks like a miracle because they're like they were determined to do that. Um, so you can just play off the moment, which is an opportunity, and it's quite hilarious opportunity as itself. Again, you can change the position, but from what I've noticed, this really does seem to be the most fair position that no one would expect, and I get a great result every time. So let's say they point to two cards. Uh, they eliminate it. Okay. Uh, they point to another two cards. Here's one other scenario. They point to two other cards. That is not that one. We'll eliminate it again, because you did in the first phase. You're really being fair. And now you're down to one. You've got the ten of clubs. Okay. Now, let's say you get down to that situation where you're down to two cards earlier. Okay. And ten of clubs spin right here. Okay. They point to two cards. Okay. Let's just say in this situation. They point to these two. Okay. You may eliminate the other three. We've got the two cards right here. I need you to nudge. This is a John Armstrong idea. I need you to nudge one card towards me. And it's so brilliantly devious. I thank you, John. You did an amazing job with the subtlety. They now nudge one card towards me. So if they nudge ten of clubs, and I go, you nudge ten of cl clubs towards me, I'll put, toss away the other one, and then show ten of clubs. Okay? If they choose the other card, they nudge the other card towards me, I go, okay, and you left that card for yourself? And they would go, yes. They technically did. They nudge one towards you, that one's for them. So you, so you nudge this card towards me, and you left this one for yourself? And they go, yes. And because it's for them, audience would understand that it um, it should be their card. And you toss away the other one, and then you get the result. So you understand that it's a force, and you force a decision while seemingly being fair in every path. And the audience doesn't realize they've been uh, had, or duped, or whatever you want to say. They, they've been forced. <laughs> the Ten of Clubs. And all these cards are blank cards. You're set for a beautiful revelation. You can leave them openly on the table right here, which the audience will grab at in a second. Okay? We show 10 clubs, and we say it means nothing whatsoever unless, and I can lift it up, it matches the prediction perfectly. And then you can show it. If for people who are from distance, you can show both, and then people react. They go, yeah, great. And one other idea you can do is you can limit it down to one. You add all the intention. All the focus is there. You turn on your prediction first. And you can show ten clubs. This this actually might be a better idea. And then you say it means nothing whatsoever unless you predict it perfectly. And then everything's like, wow, they did it. Yay. That might be better. In either case, whichever you do, right after you get the um, four cards. Okay. And uh, they didn't choose. Um, you well, actually, you wouldn't get them. You would actually, have, you would never even touch them. You actually, at the end, uh, the spectator will mention it. Well, they're all ten of clubs. And and if they don't, you could actually mention it. This is something I usually do to make sure I eliminate that possibility in the back of their minds, even if they don't say it. And you go, wow, that's cool. But you know what? You could actually just argue that all these are ten of clubs. And they go, yeah, that's fair. Oh, wow, he's actually being supportive, destroying his own trick. How confident is he? Why is he telling me this? And it leads for a great impact because you could say, or they can do it, and they can show that all the rest of the cards are blank. Or they just look and they start freaking out. Oh my gosh. And I did this trick a lot uh, at one of my past jobs. I would interact with clients a lot. And this trick hit home hard. It is, works especially well for the ladies. This prediction style effect is simple. It gives them everything they've ever wanted, essentially, in a tightly packed thing. It's great. Expect, the ladies love this trick. So uh, not uh, liable for PUA, but PUA workers, this is a great trick to keep in your back pocket. Um, and yeah, it's just a pack trick I really love. So I hope you enjoyed that performance. Uh, this is color pixelated. It's a great, great card trick. I just happened to come out of nowhere. I was like, how many color changes can I realistically do and make a commercial and make it nice looking? And I came up with this independently. So uh, that guy you can do, and I'll name his name below, all those wacky color changes in there, you know, continuous things with different methods, I'll say. 
Um, I'm playing friendly. I'll credit you if it really was yours or anyone else's. I just want to do the proper job crediting. And so I could jump into the effects because this is an awesome piece of magic. And so uh, the setup is, well, as you can imagine, uh, you would have two red cards, two blue cards, and one um, odd back. And so I'm using just bicycle red backs, bicycle blue backs, and a tally ho <clears throat> from a tally ho deck of cards. And it simulates it perfectly, the same size, everything. And so we want this. And the order would be um, red, blue, odd card, whatever you decide to use. If it's yellow, even better. So uh, red, blue, whatever card, random card you decide to use. That's the same size, everything. And you would want at least a little bit of borders on it as well. That would be a nice tip. And then blue and uh, red. So looks like so. The cards you will use, um, this is just a template. You can really use whatever cards you want. But just make them all different. Okay, that's the idea. All different ones. So you got some variety right there. Okay. And so uh, for the context, I'll just say it. Uh, red nine of spades, blue ace of diamonds, uh, random two of uh, diamonds, okay? Two of spades, red two of spades, and then um, red uh, jack of spades, okay? And the random two of diamonds is like the random odd back. So going into this, we have the cards, but we have them squared, and when we take them out, from the packet we don't want to show any of that we just take it out and then you say to the spectator i want to show you an optical illusion we just take it out whole packet all together and you say i want to show you an optical illusion okay here's a not a weird optical illusion i'm, I'm curious about um and you do an elmsley count you start off with the elmsley count so you do it how many cards do you happen to see and you do one two three, four, okay? And on the last two cards that Elmsley count, you stick one card, another card behind, another card behind. Some person may know who, what the, exactly this is or crediting, so I'll pin that. But I just do this. And how many cards do you see? Four. And how many cards do you see that were red? They would go three, and one is blue. Or you can mention, and it's odd to say that people say that, you could also just present it this way. It's odd to say that people say it's, um, or interesting, rather. It's interesting to note that people say that there's three red cards and one blue card. You then take the two red cards and you display them. And this larger action of displaying it covers a smaller action of you getting a break right below the uh, blue card. So you take off the top two cards and you display it. Uh, and you show the cards so people seem it's fair and you get a break immediately below the blue card right here, okay? You then take these two red cards in this case, and then you uh, put them right below in an open tilt, and then it's very open even for spectators. Just don't let them see the card below it because that is the uh, card you're gonna change into for the final phase. So you get the red cards, put it right below the top blue card, and then push it inside and square everything up, okay? This looks like they went inside. And then you go, and you, so the first phase you show, it's interesting that people say three red cards, one blue card. And when I give it a spin, people now say, and you can mention this in the presentation, people now said that they see three blue cards. And I do one, two, three, four, same display. And they see three blue cards and one red card. And now there is a slight discrepancy in the way you're saying and doing it, because even though you did sh show it, you're only displaying right now two blue cards and one red card, even though they saw it. So slight discrepancy, but it's no big deal. I'm just mentioning it out loud. Instead of taking these to a tilt move, we don't do anything. We're already set. Just by the way it's this uh, trick is constructed, we square everything up. We don't do anything, we just square it on up, turn over the cards, and now we take a moment to display the cards to give a natural state of things. And I do just a quick push off of three cards. Even though there's five, we show it as four. Okay. And the cards look normal. And I would say something a heckler or a spectator would say as I look at them. And seriously, the cards look normal. 
they go show it real fast square everything up so they can't get a recognition because if they saw a face uh, a card earlier that's the the other card that's hidden and they don't see it they'll call it out so that's why i just say and the cards look normal okay square everything up and as i square everything up i then take the top card after square everything up i take the top card which is the odd back card for how far we've gone and we take it to the bottom we don't display it but we just uh, and the cards look normal okay and it's funny and this is why we do after i've taken it to the bottom i go to the card to spin and i say it's funny because if i give it another spin then card the car starts to go and i can do it slow mo a slow mo frustration count cards seem and you can do a display like this display like this the cards uh have color changed again and then I do the same display as in I did the packs it trick, I believe. I turn it over so they can see it and then down and get a break on it, those two cards. And so they can see the odd card open. And they're like, wait, what? And then I display it for a second just to mess with them. They're like, whoa, that's crazy. How'd that happen? And they're freaking out. And then I turn that double over. So the uh, odd card is second from the top now. I push off the top card. And I say it's a weird trick. Some cards are red, and I turn over this packet. Top card will be red, turn over. Some cards are red, some cards are blue, and I can flick it as I display it. People are freaking out, wait, what? How do they color change again? On top of all these other color changes, it keeps them captaining weird things. And I say some cards are red, some cards are blue. I don't, and then I drop this card right on top. Okay, very casually, drop it on top, square it. Weird stuff is going on, and I thank you. Or I don't know what's going on. And the people are reacting, they're laughing, it's like it's chaotic, it's fun. And I go, and I thank you. I do my bow, the audience naturally claps, it's their applause cue. Basically everyone knows that, they're like, whoa. And then I casually just ditch all these cards. You can't show them, you can't have them examined. But everyone's just like, wow, we've seen it so many times over and over again. They just accept it. I ditch them. You can't hand the cards out, but they, they get it. They're like, oh, that's cool. And this is, um, this is uh, color pixelated. It's just a great, great, great effect. I love it to death. Um, and when I get to use it, great. It's wonderful. Just remember to have that special odd card. I know it's uh, just a tally hole, blue tally hole, but it would be even better if it was like yellow or green card in the center that we use for the effect. And you get that real, whoa, I didn't see that coming kind of effect. And it's crazy that you just do it for five otherwise normal outside the, cu to the, the backs being different, colors being different. Five normal cards, basically. That's crazy to think about. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, uh, please give it a like. And if you haven't seen this video or this video yet, definitely do so. And I will see you in the next one. And that said, wishing everyone a wonderful day. Again, if you enjoyed this trick, please, if you can, give it a like, subscribe for more magical content. And if you haven't checked out this video or this video yet, definitely do so. And I will see you in the next one.